Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar on how to upgrade your restaurant marketing in 2023. We'll give everyone a few minutes to join and settle in. So we're just going to go off screen and then we'll be back in a few minutes to kick everything off. Okay, so it looks like everyone has joined, so let's get started. I know you're all eager to learn more about how you can make the most out of your marketing uh, this year in 2023. My name is Rachel. I'm the Client Marketing Lead here at Lunchbox, and today I'm really excited to be joined by Kelly, President and CRO, sharing her experience on data and ownership and customer growth at Brightloom. So welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Excited to be here. So before we get started today, I wanted to share a bit about what we do here at Lunchbox. For those of you who may not know, Lunchbox is an all-in-one system for restaurants. We help you increase sales and strengthen guest engagement through our products like online ordering, worker aggregation, loyalty, and more. High growth restaurants live with Lunchbox to consolidate their tech stack, create a beautiful branded digital experience and grow their business. And Kelly, I would love for you to share a little bit about Brightloom. Thank you so much, Rachel. So Brightloom is a customer data platform and customer intelligence tool built for restaurants. We help restaurants in three very key but important areas. One is getting access to data. Collecting and organizing it we know is a really hard thing to do. And we wanna make this really, really easy for restaurants such as, as yourself. Two, we take that data and we make sense of that data. How are your customers evolving and changing? What is working, what is not? Through a set of insights and dashboards, we really help rest restaurants and brands like yourself understand as things are changing, what you can do to take step three, which is the right action. How do we take the data we've collected, your understanding of it and build things like segmentation that allows you to take the right action with the right customer at the right time. We do these three steps in conjunction with platforms like Lunchbox, where we can really help you build an end-to-end -end engine. We are the brain and Lunchbox is more or less the tool that helps you take these insights and learnings to the road. So with that, let's get into it. And before we get into the meat of our discussion, I did want to first kind of address a little part of the what we call the elephant in the room when it comes to data, and that's data ownership. We kind of see in the industry that 
Restaurant owners come from a wide variety of backgrounds, but they kind of struggle with a very similar challenge that it's really difficult to understand where their customers are coming from and how they're interacting with their digital storefronts and why they're converting or why they're not converting. And what we have seen in a recent survey was that 43% of restaurants professionals believe that third-party apps, many of which withhold data, are a big interference with the direct relationship between the restaurant and its customers. And a lot of this has to do with the inability to own their purchasing data. At a high level, they're able to see sales metrics, which is great. But in order to build and maintain the relationships that we see build businesses and build the communities that every restaurant wants, is that they need more of an interaction than just simply completing purchases. And so that's gonna bring us into our discussion, which we're super excited about today. So how we're gonna update our marketing in 2023. Today, Kelly and I are going to be discussing these three topics. And within these three topics, we're also going to be sharing three insightful tips that you can walk away with because we want to make sure that you can have actionable things to improve your marketing today. So we're first going to start with how to get your data in order. Then we're going to move how you can execute on this data through your marketing efforts. And then lastly, we want to discuss how to use this data and marketing to build a robust loyalty program so that your customers are super excited to use it and be very engaged with your brand. So number one is how to get your data in order. And our tip here is to encourage just to start leveraging your data. And if this tip made you chuckle, you're not alone because we meet so many teams that are actually sitting on a wealth of data, but don't have the time or maybe not even the understanding of what to do with it. So if you can relate with that, we really want to encourage you to start putting use to the data that you have. And we know that it can be intimidating. So we're here today to tell you that it doesn't have to be complicated. And if you're just getting started out, it's honestly better to start small and a little bit simpler. And uh, we'll move over into uh, why this is important. Because there is a difference between what you see on the screen here of first party data to third party. And if you're unfamiliar with this, first party data just means that you as the business owner can own this data. Where a lot of times when you're pulling from third party platforms, you don't always have the ownership of it and it can be difficult because you have limitations to what the data is that's coming to you. And at Lunchbox and Brightloom, we're huge believers in our restaurant partners to have ownership to their customer data. Obviously after privacy standards are met, but we wanna make sure that you're receiving data and able to use it because getting the data is only half the battle. It might look impressive to get an export of a hundred different customer data points, but if you're cross-eyed looking at it and you're not really understand what story it's telling you, then it's really no use to you. So then you might be asking yourself, what is good or bad data? And it's a really good question because if you're unfamiliar with using data, you might not know when it's been given to you. So when we say what's good data, we have four points that we really focus on. We want to make sure data is clean, actionable, tailored, and secure. Data needs to come to you comprehensively. Otherwise, you'll continue to sit on it. It also needs to be available to you in a timely manner. Because from a marketing perspective, if you only know that your customer made their first purchase a week ago, then you won't be able to send timely communication to them and keep your engagement up. Which flows nicely into also why your data needs to be tailored. Because the backbone of any successful campaign is the ability to personalize your communication, your offers, and your promotions. And then lastly, never forget the importance of upholding the privacy and security of the data that you house. Your customers entrust your organization with their information to make sure that they're exchanging for a nice experience and never take that for granted. So now that you have a good understanding of what good data can look like, Kelly, I would love to hear and understand a little bit more of 
how restaurants can even understand how to get this data and what to do with it. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's so interesting at Brightloom, we built a data data platform to solve this, this exact problem. And what's so fascinating is when Brightloom first started, we actually really were focused on helping marketers, helping restaurant owners get better at building customer relationships. And what we quickly learned in that process is that the marketing sometimes wasn't always the problem. Oftentimes it was the data that we were working with. Some of my favorite questions to ask restaurateurs is, how many customers do you have? Do you know what your contactability rate is with those customers? Are duplicates a problem for you? Uh, most often, you know, as you're probably reflecting yourself, most often restaurateurs and marketers don't have answers. And oftentimes they may not have accurate answers to these questions. And so Brightloom's here to help you solve that problem. And I wanted to just share a few common challenges that we see and maybe give you some ideas on how to solve those. The first thing we co most commonly see is brands aren't collecting enough data. You know, as we partner with other platforms like POS systems, with platforms like Lunchbox, we often see that brands have not even taken the first step at turning on the right access. So, so the first tip I can tell you as you think about, am I collecting the right data? Log into your POS system. Make sure you've got the settings turned on where your historical data is being collected and stored for you. If it's not, reach out to your POS rep and ask them to help you get started. Because I see this time and time again that the right settings aren't established in the right systems to actually allow access to the data. I'll also tell you that sometimes the data that you're getting through the systems you have may not be comprehensive enough. If you really think about building great marketing around your data, making sure your data is working for you, you have to be able to collect both the transaction and the customer data and build, and build a connection of that data in one single way. Oftentimes, this becomes a really, really hard, a hard thing to do. And in addition, a lot of platforms may not want to share that data with you. A lot of POS systems now are doing things like chip and pin, which are making getting access to the collection of customer data harder and harder. So what are you going to do as a marketer? How are you going to help understand really where your customers are transacting and when? Here's a few tips, all right? One, I would say if you don't have, if you're not already doing a customer uh, marketing list today, do it. Give your customers the optionality to sign up for ongoing communication from you. And when you do this, don't just ask for their contact information. Ask about them. Let me, let me share a story with you, a really great example of a brand taking a, a simple process like an email list and making it impactful. So where we were, were working with a, a multi-chain sports bar and helping them build out their, their email marketing list. And in doing so, they've added a few extra data points in their onboarding process. They're in a larger city with a lot of teams and a lot of sports. And so simply asking the customer, what sports are of interest to you and what are your favorite teams has allowed them now to build marketing campaigns and really take a more tailored approach to their customers when they know that their sports team is gonna be up for a big game, how do they communicate and create an engagement with that customer, knowing now that that is the team that they that they love and support? Doing something very simple like that allows you to take data and make it really meaningful with your customers. Another component or another idea, right, that we're going to talk a bit more about today is just creating loyalty. Whether you have a loyalty program or not yet, most loyalty programs were initially designed to collect data. It was, if you give me your information, I'll give you rewards as part of that. And as time goes on, loyalty programs have certainly evolved. And I see time and time again that in that process, brands aren't asking enough information about their most loyal customers to create better synergies around the things that they want and that they need. And sometimes it's not always products. Sometimes it's not always offers. Sometimes it might be a, a special experience. It might be access to things like a new menu item. 
So think about your loyal customers and make sure that you not only are collecting their data, but my second big challenge here, you can also contact them. Question I would ask you all to think about, are your, your loyal customers, are they contactable? And when I say contactable means, can you, get a, can you get in touch with them through email, through SMS, through some mechanism that you know they often respond to? I see this time and time again, where brands don't realize that they don't have a high contactability rate on their most loyal customers. Dig into this and make that part of your New Year's resolution. Improve your contactability with your loyal customers. And the third most often, the third most uh, frequent challenge I see with brands is duplication of data. You know, sometimes POS systems are great. Sometimes they actually create more havoc than, than you know. Oftentimes, as, as customers are coming into your location or transacting, let's say, through a mobile app, you, they may the, the POS may not be picking up enough information to identify the customer. So what do they do? They create a new profile. My favorite thing to do is ask a brand before they get started with us to say, how many customers do you have? And then once we bring their data into our platform, we, we analyze the difference. And quite frankly, duplication is a really big problem. And if you don't know that you've got five profiles for one customer, you're probably doing something wrong as you try and engage with them. So focus on duplication and you know, make sure it's not a problem for you. So as we kind of, so now, you know, we've talked about having healthy data, getting away from bad data, having good data. You know, I, I think of this often like a New Year's resolution, right? So your first New Year's resolution perhaps is going to be, how do I create a healthy data set for me to build my business on? Just like garbage in and gar is garbage out, right? Let's fix that problem. Now, as part of that, you also got to think about how am I going to use that data? So if you go to the next slide, we've got some key metrics that we, we would highly influence you to think about. If you know these six data points as part of your overall data set, we know that you can be successful in driving really good and smart marketing. Do you know your total orders and how they adjust and, and evolve day, day in and day out? Do you know how those orders span over a time period or day part? Do you know how many unique customers you really have? Do you know how many new unique customers you're adding? Do you know what the revenue is for those customers? Do you know what their average order size is, what their lifetime value looks like, and what the return rate is on those customers? Do these customers churn? How frequently? When do they churn? And how do you help uh, react to, to each of these data points as they change in your business? One of the best things you can do for the overall health of your customers and your business is to know and understand these data points on your customers every single day. So as things change, as things either move up or down, or maybe take a dramatic shift, you can adjust your strategy and optimize the situation. Love to share an example with you. We were working with a coffee company and the coffee company noticed that there all of a sudden was a dramatic increase on oat milk orders. They were using our platform and quickly were able to pull this insight to the, to the surface and realized there was something here that they needed to lean in on. What they came to find out is in certain markets that they served, oat milk and some of their biggest competitors had run out. There had been a supply issue. Therefore, our customer was able to really influence and gain a lot of new customers and, and frequency out of those customers because they did have oat milk and they could supply the demand and therefore they created a lot of loyal customers because of that. So that's just a really good example of how having insight on how these things change and evolve day to day can really impact the way you think about your customers and maximizing your relationship with them.
That's an incredible example. Like such a little nuance that something's happened and someone might also kind of breeze over that and just be like, oh, oat milk's out. But if we're able to like retain those customers or win back new customers over a little change in the market, um, that's just so fantastic. Yeah. So then uh, jumping into our next piece here, we're now going to talk about, well, we're kind of a little bit talking about executing on your data, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper in understanding that one size fit all marketing just doesn't work anymore. It becomes really ineffective. And a lot of times these strategies really lean heavily on discounting, which isn't really good for a brand's bottom line. And to be honest, from a consumer, sometimes can get a little bit dry. So Kelly, I would love to hear how restaurants can use their data to improve this um, relationship even more and their marketing strategies. You bet. This is where the magic happens, right? A brand, you know, has hopefully spent a lot of time getting the right data, making sense of it, really understanding, knowing what the milestones are and when they change. But then what do you do, right? How do you put it into action? I like to tell brands, you know, you got to always be able to understand and drive targeted messages through the ability to answer a few quick things, right? Who, what, when, where, and why, basically, right? Can you build today segmentation, right, around customers based on those attributes? Who do you need to target? What do you need to target them with? Do they need an offer, right? Do they need something more from you to maybe change their behavior? Maybe they don't. Where can you target them? Where do they typically show up? And which channels, you know, should you parlay this information to? It's really important that brands can not only understand it, but then take that data and insert that information into the right campaign with the right folks at the right time. You know, we think of this as, as really hyper segmentation. It's not about some high level demographics. It's more about what do these customers need and how do I get that to them? A simple tool that I would share with you today that you should maybe think about if you haven't already is creating segments of customers around their recency, frequency, and monetization. Many of you may know this as RFM. What that helps you do is really understand which of your customers drive the most value for you and which customers don't. How do you align your strategy? Uh, we call them activity tiers, right? But let's say all the various segments between the most frequent and the least frequent. That should be a very simple thing that you can rely on day in and day out to really put the data into action quickly and ensure that your marketing campaign, your efforts to engage your customers are really going to work. So very, very simple, very easy. You got to do it. And that is such an easy first place to start. It's just... Where are they spending their time? And I even get a lot of questions of like, oh, but that's like, when you said high percent, like segmentation, and they're almost like, oh my God, but it's so creepy. I just know so much, but there's such a beautiful way and difference between being like knowing too much, but also just knowing what people like and knowing how they shop with you. And that's where the relationship I see really flourishes because people are getting things that they actually care about rather than being blasted with all this information or promotions to things that they just don't. And I love it. Yeah. In today's, in today's digital world, everybody now is now engaging customers through digital, you know, access points and channels. So yours has to matter, right. To stand out. And that's why it's so important. Very much so. And then next here, I wanted to talk a little bit about marketing channels. So just as is important to understand your customers, really understand what matters to them. It's also understanding what are the channels that one, make the most sense to your business, but also make the most sense to your customers. 
because it might seem nice or you might want to pick up all the different channels that you want to take advantage of because there's so many good ones nowadays, especially from the digital standpoint. But sometimes if you're a small team, really choosing one might be your best bet where even for your customers, if your customers aren't really engaged in email marketing, maybe looking at something like push or SMS might be the way to go. But today I do want to talk about three of the most popular ones because they tend to be the most affordable, also the most accessible from a business standpoint, also from a consumer standpoint. So first off here is push notifications. And this is a way for apps to send information to users even when they're not in current use. And this will really drive communication and engagement, reminding customers to open the app and encourage them to take specific action, which can increase your chances of conversions, also of purchases. It's really worth noting though that push notifications become extremely um, ineffective if you're not using it in, like, in an intelligent way, because you wanna be make sure that when you're setting notifications, they're highlighting certain areas to take actions, but you're not sending them too much that now they're turning off notifications and no one's looking at them. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Next up here is email marketing, one of like the kings of digital marketing still. It is a really effective way to build and maintain relationships with your customers. By consistently sending relevant and valuable information, marketers can really build trust and loyalty with their audience. Email marketing can be automated and also scaled, which means that marketers can send a very large number of emails at once without having to manual craft each one. So this can save a lot of time and resources while reaching a really large audience. And although it can be effective, it just like push notifications, it can also be easily ignored or blocked if not used properly. So be really mindful of your frequency as well as your rel relevancy. And as we've been talking about this whole session is the personalization so that when they are received, people are appreciating them and wanting to get the next one. And then last up here is SMS, which is a widely used communication method with extremely high open rates. It's personable and can be targeted as well. With SMS messages, they are typically open and read within the first couple of minutes being received, which makes it extremely effective to reach a customers for really time sensitive information or promotions. Additionally, SMS messages are received on personal devices, which can really increase the level of perceived relevance of the message to the customer receiving it when you're using targeted messaging. So kind of going back to Kelly's point, when you're thinking of the oat milk example, if you're a customer and they know that you love lattes with oat milk, imagine you go to have two coffee shops that you love and the one of them's out of them, but then you receive an SMS reminder that the other coffee shop that you love has oat milk in their store and you can go get it. Just think about what kind of like engagement you can get from that type of communication and how much your customer is going to appreciate it when that's what they need in the morning to kick off their day. I'll also add, Rachel, to that point. I mean, I've seen SMS done really, really well and not so well. <laughs> really, really not so well. <laughs> You know, you should really think about something as personal as getting a text message really with how frequent and loyal is my customer. If they come into your location or buy from you on a frequent basis, they're probably going to be more apt to, to hear from you. If they're not, right, it sometimes can be overused as a mechanism that eventually they quickly, you know, turn off because there's just not that alliance yet to the brand and welcoming you into their cell phone. So you gotta be really thoughtful around each of these channels and to your point, using the data that it's telling you, right, can be really impactful in each of these and think about them in terms of how the customer wants to receive it. For sure, what, like such a wonderful reminder. And I like to kind of play by rule of thumb too, of like before it goes out being like, would I want this? <laughs> like, is this something I would keep engaging with or would I turn this off? And it's a nice little kind of, uh, 
reminder to that point of like, you have to be very mindful of it for sure. Which goes really nicely into our uh, last piece here about um, pairing marketing with loyalty. And the big tip that we want to allow you to go home with today is focusing on your most loyal customers, which as we're even saying with SMS, focus on your most engaged customers and understand who they are, what they're doing, how did they get there, and design your programs to encourage the same behavior for the rest of your customers that haven't been as engaged. And so and you might, oh, go ahead. Well, if I could just add, you know, the a consistent data point we see is that 30% of, most likely 30% of your revenue is being generated by the top 5% of your loyal customer base. And so if there's, you know, I would almost reemphasize this point. If there's one thing you could and should be doing differently, perhaps, than you're doing today is segmenting these customers out and giving them a much different experience with your brand because they really, really do matter and treating them in such a way that will be quite frankly, better received and might make them even more loyal. The other piece is once you understand those customers driving that revenue, how do you replicate? How do you find more customers mm -hmm. like them, right? Mm -hmm. Again, that's where your data can really be key in helping you pair that marketing and loyalty a strategy and making sure that you can continue to evolve, grow and find more. Yeah, that's a good point because a lot of times the most engaged kind of get forgotten about as well because they're like, oh, they like us, they're fine. But to keep them engaged, you do have to kind of think of like, what's something new that I can offer them? So I love that point to highlight there. Um, and to help find the other customers, um, I did want to share a, a way that you can kind of do a quick five minute um, almost like workshop with your team of how to figure out how do I make a marketing plan for these new customers? And we get that a lot. They're like, okay, we have this data. We know that customers are loyal, but where do I even start to think of a cool idea that would even get these people engaged? Um, and so here, one way to first start is to pull the customers that are most loyal. And they're, depending on your loyalty program, you really kind of have to think of how to pull this data. So for customers we work with, um, if their loyalty program, it might be the people that are you know, spending the most. So their, the amount that they have spent in loyalty is quite high. And pulling that um, might be the key to what you need to look at. Or on the other side, maybe you have customers that are redeeming a lot, but they're redeeming really small quantities of spend. So they're still really engaged, but they might not be in like a high spend um, tier. And so the idea here is really figuring out from the structure of your loyalty, who are the most engaged and pulling those customers so that you can identify what are they doing. And so that's then to step two is then kind of identifying what are some similarities and differentiators that I can see. And they don't have to be big. They might be something small of seeing, oh, everyone's kind of ordering from a very similar menu category, or maybe they're redeeming from a really similar menu category. Maybe it's that your high uh, redemption customers are coming from a certain platform. Maybe they're all app users, and there's something about the app experience that is really helping them redeem much quicker. And maybe there's certain locations that are really doing well in their marketing strategies to make sure that engagement is high. And then next I would pick your top two or three and kind of allow this information to pull out ideas and create a marketing plan. So for example, if you're really noticing that your top customers are redeeming points most often on say your dessert menu, then sending a campaign to your customers that aren't redeeming as often and making some beautiful um, promotions around your dessert menu or just cross promoting and seeing if that will help them also redeem a little bit more. And then the last point here is to go live and test. So one thing our team always loves to say is that marketing is a beautiful balance between science and art. 
we have all this wonderful data to create our theories, but really it's not until it goes out into the wild that we can really understand if it's going to work. And so we just have the ideas and then we test and test and test. And then we're able to see what's working and then we double down on what works and then keep that going along the way. So really don't be scared of testing out some crazy ideas that you have. You might be super surprised what works and then be able to replicate that and keep your engagement going up. So in summary today, we had a lot of really wonderful information that we share with you, but we still wanna high highlight top three things that you can walk away from. So for tip one, make sure to start leveraging your data today. As Kelly pointed out, see what's there, see what's available to you. And if you are having a hard time really understanding what is, reach out to the companies that you're working with and ask them what you can leverage today. Tip two, one size marketing is being thrown out the window this year. It's ineffective for yourself as a business and also for customers. Make sure that you're make, having a fun time finding cool ways that you can really segment your customers and giving them promotions that matter to them. And then tip three, focus on the most loyal customers, understand who they are, what they're doing, and then design your programs to encourage the same behavior from the rest of your customer base. And before we go, I also want Kelly to share um, their wonderful health report because I think everyone needs to come take advantage of this because it's just killer. Absolutely. As I, as I was mentioning, Rachel, at the beginning that we have found as, as brands want to take on and really upgrade their marketing, it all starts at the health of your data, right? And so we actually offer and wanted to offer today to all of the uh, customers on this call, the opportunity not only to get the data health report, but to work with someone in a more hands-on approach through an, an hour kind of workshop session around the data to service up a lot of the ideas and thoughts that we shared today as we've learned, you know, working with so many brands trying to tackle this problem. So in this data health report, we'll tell you a bit more about your customer, probably where your blind spots are and some of the gaps. We'll help you understand what data is flowing and what data is not. And we'll help you come up with some ideas on how to fix that. And then as you think about enriching your data, your existing customer data, the data that you do have, we certainly give you a lot of visibility into that piece. So I wanted to offer that to all of you today and hope as part of your New Year's resolution, you will fix your data health and get it, you know, in the right path for a good new year. Yes. So please, everyone, take advantage of this incredible offer. We're going to share the link in the chat, chat as well so you can um, easily just jump on it today and reach out to Kelly and her team. Um, so thank you so much, Kelly, for spending the time uh, with me today and sharing the wealth of knowledge that you have. I, we absolutely love Bright Loom. We love sending customers to you because they just have an amazing experience and it's just a game changer. So thank you. I really enjoyed our chat today. Yeah, me as well. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions that we weren't able to answer today, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, we love to answer them or also to the Bright Loom team um, and we'll follow up with you. All right, until next time. Bye y'all.